Yo, what's up, Tab? Hi, fam. It's your boy, Stu. And Reverend Z. And we are so glad y'all joined us once again for the Tab Global Experience. We do not count it lightly that week after week, uh, y'all are joining us and showing up yes. and investing uh, and sharing this worship experience so that others uh, can uh, enjoy the Lord uh, together with Amen. you. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. We Amen. are excited that you're here. If it's your first time worship with us, please let us know by putting that one emoji in the live chat so I can tell you love the holy hug yes. the holy emoji. Also, we want to say congratulations to all the grads because it is Graduate Sunday and we yes. are recognizing all our graduates and recognizing, recognizing the accomplishments of all our grade school students, grade school students. Amen. Fine English <laughs> is important. Amen. Uh, so You're we right. celebrate you on today and we hope that you will enjoy the service. So we ready yeah, to worship. we're ready for worship. Trey, take, take it, it away. away. What's going on, Tab I fam? Listen, it's time to praise the Lord. Come on, let's make some noise right where we are. Come on, come on. Yeah. I share the sound, I share the sound, everyone. 
somebody open up your mouth and give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah, he's worthy of the glory. Great and mighty is our God. 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 Great in my 
come on, say, great and mighty. Great and mighty. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. celebrate it's time to pray to that mighty and that awesome God that we serve whose throne we have a right to come on corporately wherever you are let's pray together God we loving you today declaring above all of the names that mighty is our God and we celebrate you in this place of worship today God and wherever we may find ourselves God we are proclaiming you as our mighty God we're lifting up those families today, God, down in Florida who's lost loved ones in that collapsed building. We're praying, God, that though we cannot be there physically with them, we're praying for them, God, spiritually, and asking your very presence there, God, to give them comfort and support. And as the weeks and months and days go on, God, we're praying, God, that you would always walk with them, lead and guide them through this valley of shadow of death. Praying in this worship experience, God, for all of our graduates. We're celebrating milestones of victory with them today, God. Thanking you, God, that you walk them, walk with them every step of the way. Praying, God, that their, that their successes would be impactful upon the kingdom of God. And so as we lift this worship experience up to you today, God, we pray that this word will impact your people in a mighty way. We give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, you ought to say amen, amen, and amen. And family, as we celebrate our graduates today, would you join us? Watch this video as we celebrate today. Navigating this past school year was anything but easy. But even with all the adjustments the pandemic caused, many of our students successfully made great strides. Here at Tabernacle Baptist Church, we're proud of you and excited to celebrate our 2021 graduates and students who have accomplished great things this school year starting with grade school students notable accomplishments Ashlyn Bethel Michael Brody Jr. Aaron Brown Jordan Brunson Jack Brunson Abriana Ellison Zaya Ellison Braylon Ellison River Grant Shelton Green Devin Hurd Carter Jenkins, Carson Jenkins, Carrington Jenkins, Terrell Johnson, Kendall Johnson, Jaleesa Johnson, Bianca Jones, Jonathan McCormick, Anthony Ray, Eve Stallings, Kenneth Stallings III, Abigail Tate, Tommy Tucker, Joshua Tucker, Jaden Tucker, Olivia J. Tut, Riley Twiggs. Now for your class of 2021, Adonijah Appleberry, Jaden Armstrong, Ania Borders, Olivia Brown, Rashawn Brown, Jasmine Brown, Jack Brunson, Kennedy Bunyan, Nikki Butts, Diamond Capers, Casey Carter, Dallas Cooks, Drew Cooks, Cameron Dixon, Kayla Donaldson, Joshua Dorsey, Jordan Dorsey, Sean Michael Edouard, Sonia Edwards, Konisha Evans, Sydney Fisher, Zaire Frails, Brittany Gooden, Christopher Green, Tegan Green, Sylvia Green, Jaden Griffin, Aaron Harrison, 
Tawana Hurd, Darius Jackson, Mallory Johnson, Timothy Jones, Nigel Jones, Devin Jones, Kayla Lett, Jayla Lett, Elisha Leverett, Courtney Lewis, Michelle Lyons, Natalia Mack, Hilton McDowell, Taylor Nicastro, Cameron Parker, Miles Popularis, Aaron Quashai, Quentin Richardson, Wanda Richardson, Kennedy Rouse, Chandler Rouse, Jeffrey Rousseau, Reverend Z. Vanessa Stanley, Jimmy Taylor II, Jalen Thomas, LeBert Twiggs, LaZavier Twiggs, Sean Williams, Michaela Woodard. We'd also like to thank you parents for your dedication and hard work. Welcome, Tab iFam, and thank you for worshiping with us through Tab Global, which is our website, Tab Impact app, Facebook, and YouTube. We thank you for showing up, for sharing, supporting, and engaging. Now remember to share the link and invite your family and friends to join you too. The good news is too good not to be shared. As you normally would do, feel free to get out of your seat and sing along with our praise team. And shout and type your amens in the comments as you're blessed by the Word of God. So, on behalf of PG, that's what our family calls Pastor, and the entire Tabernacle Baptist Church family, we welcome you. And thank you for being a part of our Tab I family. Come on, let's worship. What's up, Tab I fam? God bless you. We greet you in the joy of Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, if this is your first or second time with us worshiping at Tab Global, we want to shout you out. We're so appreciative that out of all the amazing ministries throughout this world, you decided to tune in here at Tab Global. Put that one emoji up on all of our social platforms. Our Tab I team is ready to engage with you. But we also have some amazing eye partners that also want to say hello and give you a virtual hug and a virtual high five. We truly, truly, truly appreciate your presence in worship on today. Also, if there's something cel worth celebrating, let us know. A birthday, an anniversary, drop that into our comment section. Probably drop a pic. We love to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Listen, we are excited. This is our graduate Sunday. We're so proud of all of our graduates. Matter of fact, so grateful to have so many of them with us today worshiping in worship. Come on, graduates. Come on. Let's give God some praise all over. Yeah, we're so proud to have them here and some of their family. We're in the process of trying to navigate through re-entry, but we wanted them to be celebrated within the confines of our church, and so they have come in here today. I'm so proud of them. So many of them pressed through. This was a difficult year. Um, but through the grace of God, support of their village, they have made it. Also, thank you to all of our young people. Listen, I know, I know we could not get everything in, but we're going through on our social media. Every child is going to be celebrated. So if your child didn't make the video, we apologize. Uh, but we want your child to know. We want everyone to know how proud we are. So notice over the next few days, we're going to make sure that all of our youth, all of our graduates, everyone uh, needs to be celebrated. So we're going to make sure that that gets out there. We appreciate your patience, your love, and your your support. Listen, God is doing some incredible things at the Tabernacle Baptist Church as we're navigating through to get to this next normal. Listen, we have some amazing stuff we want to share with you, so stay tuned for our announcements at this time. Introducing Tab Global. Worship with us whenever and wherever through our website, Facebook, YouTube, and our Tab Impact app. There are songs that make you dance. Songs that express pain. Invoke joy. And songs that spread love. A great soundtrack. Whether written by many. Or just one. Is a connection of remarkable moments. It's the music bed for the story of life. This summer, I invite you. I invite you. I invite you. To join us as we walk through. The return. The soundtrack for relaunching worship. The Psalms of Ascent are all about remembering God's goodness, God's provision, and God's protection. Let's study this collection of Israel's songs as they journeyed to the temple. 
with three pastors coming together, leading three congregations on the great journey back to church. Back to church. Back to church. Join me, Dr. Charles Goodman, Sundays on our stream, and then watch the replays of my friends, Dr. Philip Horner and Dr. George Parks on their social channels as we give you a different perspective. Let's get inspired from the writers of the song. Let's start our journey back to in-person worship. The return soundtrack for relaunching worship. Sunday Tab family. We hope, as always, that you are enjoying yourself, you've had a great week, and that you're also having a chance to get out and have some fun in this hot sun. Today is Graduate Sunday, so to all the students and graduates that have been recognized, look, we're proud of you guys. Thanks so much for all your efforts. You're going to continue to do amazing things, no doubt. Listen, today, guys, is the last installment of the Circles of Growth Small Groups. And we have with us none other today than Dr. Wilnetta Sweeting. She is a facilitator in what we consider to be the seasoned saints, specifically. Uh, but listen, she's going to give you the name of her group and talk more about the range. There's actually quite a diverse group there. Keep your eyes on the screen. Um, I've been teaching now for partly over about 10 years. Actually, I started as a substitute teacher and the original um, teacher, Mr. Betts, he passed away probably about 11, 12 years ago, and I've been teaching ever since. But right now, we're discussing faith. Faith, confidence, and hope. And we're discussing that because as a Sunday school class, what we do is we're like an arm where we're um, for reaching out to those that are lost, um, teaching those who are lost, um, winning souls to Christ, and also nurturing those, maturing and caring for those. How about I look at 2 Timothy 3.16, which the emphasis is going out, you know, teaching God's word. You know, God's words is a breath to everyone, and it's for profitable, the teaching for reproofing, correcting, and training in his righteousness. You know what, you can come to be any stage of life. The class is open to everyone. As again, as I say, our purpose is to reach out to those who are in need, who are willing to learn about God's word. Again, we're teaching God's word. Um, we're trying to winning souls for those who are lost, and then we're nurturing those who need help there. All right, listen, we've done our very best to make sure to get you connected, aligned, and to make sure that you know all about the small group offerings here at Tabernacle Baptist Church. Listen, speaking of TAB, it is almost time for us to get back together. Stay tuned. In the month of July, we're going to take you through all the steps of what it means to remerge in the house of God. Aren't you excited? We're so excited as well. A lot of work's going into making sure that when it is time for us to come back and worship, that you are safe, you are comfortable, and that you know you are welcomed and loved. So make sure to rock with us all of July as we get to share with you what the remerge process looks like. As always, thank you so much for worshiping with us here at Tabernacle Baptist Church, a local church making a global impact. Wow, once again, thank you so much to our multimedia ministry that in this month that we focus on our children and youth, we really have highlighted our circles of growth. And I, once again, am so grateful for our facilitators and those that serve in this capacity because even though we have been socially distanced, our circles of growth groups continually grow because most people understand that even in this time, we need fellowship. We need one another. I am hoping and praying that as we've been uh, talking about it over the last month, that you would find a group. If you have not already uh, been involved, even as we move into the the next normal. I'm hoping that it's something that will continue to grow and expand because we understand that discipleship is best done through fellowship. This is what we say in our circles of growth. We are doing life together. And so as we begin to continue to navigate this through, it's always important to know that you have a family of God that you can grow with. Listen, I'm excited. As you know, we are really trying to talk through and get through to see what our next steps will be when it comes to us re-entering into worship. And so I'm so grateful for our re-entry team. Thank you so much for 
there's so many of you who are praying. And so once again, you're going to hear some extra uh, amens and stuff as we're really trying to navigate, get people in and work through some logistics as we are still virtual, but we're trying to get through our protocols. And so I'm so grateful every single week, the people that are allowing us to work through the things from parking to ambassadors, because we want to make sure that we're doing things in an efficient, efficient and effective way. It's always got to be done in excellence. So thank you for your patience. As we've been looking through what the numbers are doing, they are raising up. And listen, I know how people are. We've tried our best to make sure that we get people vaccinated and safe. Listen, as your pastor, I've done it. I've been vaccinated since February. We've tried to put the information out there. I, I want to let you know, get the best information as possible. We encourage vaccination. We're a vaccination site. And I'll be honest, what the doctors are saying with a new variant that's coming in, it's got to be bigger than us, and we want to make sure that we're doing things that protect others. Even if you are remain healthy and pro pro uh, uh, progress through, we want to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to get on the other side of this. So as the numbers continue to go, they're creeping up slowly. Uh, we have something that we're looking at, and that's based upon what we see in our local context in Richmond County and Columbia County and Aiken County, which is our local context for which services our uh, local campuses. So we'll continue to monitor that, and hopefully as they continue to creep, up. It will once again help us with our timeline of seeing when we can get back here to worship together in spirit and in truth. Listen, but I also need your information. Our Remerge survey is very important. This is the last Sunday uh, that we'll be sharing. Getting this feedback and information is significant. We want to hear what you have to say because it helps us as we try to figure out what it will look like going back. And so we understand uh, that all of our input is important, so make sure that you're doing that as well. Also, thank you so much for so many people who went to our revised VBS. It was a great opportunity. It has some wonderful classes from dance, from voice training to baking and cooking. We did something different. This virtual space has allowed us to try something different. So thank you for being a very wonderful church that really just is willing to try different stuff and see how things are. And so we are in the imagination stage. It's the year of expansion. And I really believe that we're going to see God do some incredible things as we try to figure out what the next normal will be. Listen, I don't know about you. I don't want to go back to what was. I'm embracing what can be. We are living in a time of possibilities, and I'm believing that by faith, and so God is going to do that. Listen, it's time for us to give. How do you know that you can't be God-given no matter how hard you try? So one of the things that we must make sure we do is that we live life as good stewards of our time, our talent, and yes, even our treasure. Listen, you see the multiple ways on the screen that you can give from Givelify, Secure Give, Cash App, or even go to our website, tbcaugusta.org. I always give a shout out to all the wonderful people that drop their gifts off, mail their gifts in. People who have already created a recurring payment, you say, listen, I'm prioritizing God this year. And one thing that I must say and commend you, Tabernacle, is your faithfulness. You continually support the ministry. You allow us to be a blessing in our community to help people. That's our chief aim because we are a church making an impact. Also, a shout out to our first and second time givers. Listen, we learned something that is not about the quantity, it's the quality. And as I see the look, the books every single week, we have people all across the world who sow into our ministry. And we really appreciate you for allowing us to continue continue to do the work that God has called us to do. While you're ready to give, come on, let's settle ourselves and let's pray as we ask God to bless the gifts that we shall offer to him on this day. God, we absolutely love you and we bless you. And we pray now, God, that you would be uplifted, that you would once again be honored in our giving. Lord, we're not just giving from our pockets, we're giving from our heart. And we're not just giving money or seed, we're giving our lives to you. And so, Lord, we bless you. We pray now that you would honor it. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on, let's receive our worship and arts ministry and get ready to press play on track number four, the return, the relaunching of worship soundtrack. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Lift it up. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. I know what it looks like. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It 
may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
All you got to do is trust God like and believe so on right, him. But I'm yeah, so right I trust your plan. Like I'm so I trust right. Lift your hands if you know he's already got it under control. This is how I fight my battle. We serve a victorious God, and he cannot lose. He cannot lose. But as long as I'm surrounded by him, I'll never lose because I'm surrounded. And I'm always I'm surrounded by him. Woo! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by him. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Somebody say, Victory belongs to Jesus. He's got it. Victory belongs to Jesus. He's got it under control. Victory belongs to Jesus. Say, Victory. victory Come on, if you believe it, say, Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. He cannot lose. Victory belongs to Jesus. With God on our side. Victory belongs to Jesus. We are victorious. Say victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. You might be sick right now, but he's got it. Victory belongs to Jesus. You might be praying for that family member, but he's got it. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. He's got it under control. Don't you worry about it, baby. Because victory belongs to Jesus. Say that victory belongs to Jesus. Somebody tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. together and say it. We have the victory. When you're riding in your car, just remember this. We have the victory. When you get that doctor's report, just remember that. We have the victory. When you get your grades back, just remember that. We have the victory. When they say that you wouldn't make it, just remember that. We have the One last time all over this building, let's shout it together that.
we absolutely have victory in Jesus, and we are so amazed at the love that Jesus gives to us. While we're sitting on ourselves to prepare ourselves to push play on this track number four, can we pray together? God, we thank you and we bless you. We absolutely love you. You alone are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. And so now, God, we pray that you once again allow us to hear the words of this song that we'll be challenged, encouraged, made the better. And so now, God, give preaching and teaching power that only comes from you. We love you and we acknowledge you. And so, Lord, be lifted high in this place. That is our simple prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we are pushing play on our The Return soundtrack for relaunching worship. And as we begun this series that will take us throughout the duration of this summer, as well as it takes us to the time that we come back for worship. We understand that preparing for worship is not just about what you can do for the building or getting the protocols together. It is also about making sure that we ourselves are focused on the real one who provides the authentic center of our worship, which is God. So listen, we're on track number four. We're at Psalm 123, this fourth song in the Song of Ascents. Let us lift it together. It's in our message translation, but as long as your book says Bible, you are absolutely fine. Here is a word of God in this very small and short song. It says this, I look to you, heaven-dwelling God, look up to you for help, like servants alert to their master's commands, like a maiden attendant, her lady. We're watching and waiting, holding our breath, awaiting your word of mercy. Mercy, God, mercy. We've been kicked around long enough, kicked in the teeth by complacent rich men, kicked when we were down by arrogant brutes. Once again, the opening portion of this song, I look to you, heaven-dwelling God, look up to you for help. As we title this fourth track, I want to talk today from that thought, I look to you. Lord, speak, your people need to hear. You can imagine as this pilgrim, as he has been sojourning and going back and forth, as he's been trying to get himself ready to make this audience and long journey, the journey from where he lives to the place of worship was a long way, but it was one that he was prepared for. He had his song book, his hymn book, if you will, a soundtrack that was to encourage him along the journey. And as we've been talking about how these songs have been put together, even though there were a variety of authors, they began to kind of put into mindset the ones who would have to journey to the place to corporately gather to worship God. But as we get ready to push play on track number four, it's interesting to note that each song in their own unique way kind of gives us an ebb and flow of the mindset of the pilgrim. From track number one that really opens on a downer as it talks about the deceitful nature of humanity. Then moves into track number two where we find out where our true source of help comes from to the place where finally we see in track number three, this place of worship, Jerusalem, why it is significant and why it is a place that we all should want to come together corporately. It is in track number four, this small, seemingly interlude of a song begins to shift us back. Can you see the trajectory, highs, lows, as you see the tensions and frustrations that is echoed in these songs? And one of the reasons I absolutely love teaching and preaching the songs is because they do not allow themselves uh, to put emotions aside. No, these are very emotional songs. These lyrics and words are powerful because they begin to paint the picture for the person who's reading them and the one who's reciting them that it's okay to have some tough moments, some frustrating periods. But what we see in this fourth song is one thing that is crucial. You can tell that this song is couched and clouded with frustration. But the critical thing is that this pilgrim knows that in the midst of frustration, know who to focus on. I say that because in this world of life that we live in, oftentimes we can look around and see a lot of different things. And if we're not careful, we can put our focus, our trust, our confidence in people and circumstances and situations that cannot provide relief. But one thing that this fourth song challenges you and I is to understand that we look 
to God in every situation. Which means I don't just look to God when things are going well, but I also look to God when things are not going well. I don't just look to God when I'm on the mountaintop, but even as I'm trying to sojourn through the valley low, I still look to God. And maybe that's the word for you and I today as we're allowing these melodies to begin to outline and begin to paint the picture of the realities of our own lives. Is that even in the midst of frustration, we got to still remain faithful in our focus to God. We are here today and celebrating others who have graduated. We appreciate the things that they've done, and many of them could not have been here if they did not have extreme focus. We celebrate our graduates. We celebrate those youth who've been promoted and others. We are grateful for how God kept them. But let's be honest, it's difficult to stay focused in frustrating times. Frustrated when you're tough by news that's going crazy around social media. Frustrated by a pandemic that it doesn't seem as if it's coming to a clear end frustrated by racism and sexism and all kind of isms it's tough to once again sojourn through life being frustrated and that's where the pilgrim is he's living in a world of frustration he is being ridiculed by people who are at ease he's being ridiculed by people who's not taking their relationship with God as seriously as he is and so as he has his headphones on as he continues to go where God wants him to go he has to make this song become real in his life to let others around him know that it does not matter how heavy it gets no matter how tough the ridicule he trusts that through it all God is his source of help and when you and I come to that place maybe that's the clarion word for someone to let you know that unfortunately we can't live in li live in worlds where there won't be tension there won't be frustrations but we can remain focused on God and I need you to get that today because at the end of the day, these few verses lifts up that one idea. That's the one main thought to no matter what happens, no matter what oppression, no matter what comes your way, still stay focused on God. And that's the life that this pilgrim lives in. And that's the life that you and I live in. That's the challenge that we have every single day is how do I maintain this focus? How then can I trust in a world where it seems like there are very few things that are trustworthy. And I need to give you that understanding. If I was to lift up this song in just two principles, it's simply this. It's based upon the dependence on God and the desire for grace. Those two ideals are, are complementing one another. This dependence on God and this need for grace is what this song is all about. That's the real essence of this song. This whole song in four verses is interlude of a song simply gets you and I to understand that these are intertwined together this dependence on God and this desire for grace that through God I get grace and with grace I experience God and that's what he's asking for in this song but I want to lift up because I see a triune way that this is expressed, these two ideals, these two principles, these two protocols, this desire of grace, this dependence on God is manifested in three ways. Let me share for you quickly what I think this text seems to suggest as he's having to live in a world where everyone else seems to be comfortable but him. Everyone else who's rich and doing well look down upon him. And I think that it gives you and I a wonderful picture to see that in life, you will always be up against others who do not have the same focus, don't have the same faith, and how are you going to respond? I'm talking to some graduate today that's perhaps getting ready to go off to school. It's going to be away from your parents. I want you to know you're going to be around people and situations that can influence you to go this way and that way. But here is the clarion call. Stay focused on God. There's someone that's going through a tough time. It's getting hard on your job. You're trying to navigate a few things. And I know there are people that are pushing you this way. There are others who are looking down upon you. Do not feel that you're qualified. This is what this song tells you and I. Stay focused on God. And how does this focus become what we need to look at? Let me share with you what I think we can begin to glean from these words. And how this melody can encourage our hearts and our souls. The first thing that I see out of this song that I think is worth us noting as we see this, for this compliment between dependence on God and desire for grace is first of all notice that this song gives you and I the impetus that it takes upward reverence. 
My brothers and sisters, notice how this song leaves. Remember, he is sojourning. This pilgrim is going towards the corporate gathering of worship. One of the festivals is taking place. He is now having to head that way. He's going down different paths and different roads. He's encountering a different type of people. But notice what he says while he's sojourning, while he's walking, while he is looking forward to where he's going. Notice what the text declares lyrically. It says the first thing he does is I look. Look to you, heaven dwelling God. He lifts up this idea. And I love this term here because in essence, what he's suggesting and saying is that my focus is not just on my future. My focus is on my God. He is the heaven dwelling God. He's the sovereign God. I, I love this because what we began to get in the lyrics of this song is one of the reasons why I absolutely love teaching, preaching, and reading the songs. Is because their theology is so dense. They paint pictures for you and I that explain literally complex and complicated constructs. That for you and I, when we try to explain who God is, one of the ways that the Psalms begins to do that is it explains God's grandeur based upon his proximity. That God is God because he's in a place that we're not. He, he's high and lifted up. He's in the heavens. He's in that place where all control is in his hand. And it's important to note that I appreciate that because what it forces you and I is that we don't serve a God beneath. Neither do we serve a God on our level, but we serve a God that's above us. And the reason why that is significant is because in order for us to see God, it means we must always keep our heads up. And in life, let's be honest, my brothers and sisters, that's why we ought to appreciate the proximity and the placement of God is that he's never beneath and he's not on our level, but he's at a place where it forces my head to stay up. And that's good news in a place, in a time, in a country, in a, a circumstance that forces our head down. Head down when we think about the stuff we endure. Head down when we think about the challenges and travails that oftentimes accompany this yet-to-be United States of America how our heads are down when we think about injustice and an uncertain political situation. The good news is that because of the proximity of God, it forces our head to remain up, which means it doesn't matter how frustrating life gets. It doesn't matter how tough times get. Whenever I keep my eyes on God, I have no choice but to keep my head up. And that's a good word for you and I as we sojourn through life, through frustrating moments, through tension and uh, sometimes failure through uh, ridicule and uh, diversing opinions that when we learn how to keep our heads up we will always uh, keep our eyes on God that's important because he's a heaven dwelling God but I love how it also suggests and says to us that he's enthroned in heaven so it's not just the proximity of God which provides our upward reverence but it's also watch this the position of God. He is seated on a throne. That this gives us the picture of a king, of a royalty. It, it, it's a picture of someone in control. And I think for the pilgrim, this was an important image for him to see. That he's not just seeing God, but he's seeing God sitting on a throne. Why is that important? Well, it begins to encourage this pilgrim who's facing frustrating situations, having to endure the ridicule of those at ease. But it's good to know that his God is seated above, which means he's in control of the things that this pilgrim is frustrated with. And I know there are times that you and I oftentimes wrestle because if the truth be told, we sometimes question God, what are you doing? God, where are you at? And here is a perfect picture that the pilgrim says God is where God has always been. He seated on the throne, which means that his position of power is not negated because of the things that we wrestle with. It's because we face things that are contrary and frustrating does not mean that God has abdicated his throne. And that's good news for you and I, especially as we try to figure out what it means to lead and to rule because we live in this democracy or this so-called democracy that claims rulership, that claims lordship. But here's the thing about human government is human government is only led by finite people 
with tenure in their leadership, which means they only have a set amount of time that they can operate within their space. The president gets four years and maybe eight if he's elected again. The senators get six-year terms. Congress gets two-year terms. Governor gets four-year terms. We can see the different term limits that leadership has, but here's the good news that whether they come, whether they go, whether they're good or whether they're bad, here's the good news. God, who is seated on a throne, didn't have to worry about an election. He didn't have to worry about voter fraud. That's not who God had to worry about because he's always been on the throne. He was on the throne before the beginning began, and he'll be on the throne when the end ends. In other words, we don't have to worry about God ever losing his position, his influence, and his power. He's not betowing to any kind of political leaning. He is God. And at the end of the day, they ought to give you and I hope and assurance that no matter who's in the White House, no matter who's in the governor's mansion, no matter who sits in the commissioner's seat, we serve a God that is always seated in the throne. And that's good news because he is always in charge. He's always looking lower. He's always taking account. He's never going to lose his position. His influence is unflattering. He will always be God. And that's good news for us because I'm glad to serve a God who keeps my head up, who understands that through everything, I'm still sitting on the throne. One of my mentors, Dr. Gardner C. Taylor, who I absolutely adore as a homiletical legend. I absolutely had an amazing opportunity to greet with him while he was still alive. Went to his home in Raleigh, North Carolina where we ate lunch together. He prayed over me and we talked about scripture. This great giant of the gospel one shared a story uh, that his father used to share uh, that I think really illuminates this idea of being in control. Uh, Gardner C. Taylor's father tells the story of a young man that was hired by an owner of a home to cut the owner's grass. The owner said, I'm going to give you 75 cents to cut my grass. Go ahead and cut the grass. I'll be back in a little while. Uh, Gardner C. Taylor said the young man uh, agreed to it while the owner left. The young man began to cut the grass. But by the time the owner came back, the young man had hired two other young men uh, to come cut the owner's grass. The owner was intrigued. He wanted to know what had happened. And so the young man said, well, I hired these two uh, to cut the grass for you. He said, how much are you paying them? Well, uh, I'm paying them 45 cent a piece to cut the grass. The owner looked befuddled. He, he started to figure out what's going on. He said, I'm only paying you 75 cent. And if you pay them 45 cent, which means uh, it's going to cost you 90 cent, you ain't making no profit off this matter of fact you ain't even breaking even it's costing you to hire them and this is what the young man said to the owner he said you're right but here's the thing I'm not worried about making a profit neither am I worried about breaking even I'm willing to pay the cost because at least I'm the boss that's good news my brothers and sisters that's what God says for you and I that when it comes to his leadership and lordship in our lives he's not trying to make a profit off of us he's not even trying to break even but the good news is we serve a God that has paid the cost to be the boss. He's always in control. He's always sovereign. He's always omniscient. He's always powerful. That's why we have upward reverence. But it's not only upward reverence, but there's something else. It also takes outward anticipation. I love the imagery that this pilgrim then shares lyrically that he talks about this continual nature that he is praying. He's lifting his head. He's always focusing on God. But then he lets us know that his focus, his prayer, comes with anticipation. Notice what the text says. The lyrics move like servants, alert to their master's commands, like a maiden attending her lady. He lifts this up and he raises imagery that for you and I seems strange. Matter of fact, the Greek, I mean the Hebrew of this particular passage, lifts up a couple of words that if you read it in verse 2, it, it raises them as the servant's eyes and the master's hands. That, that these two analogies, uh, uh, a servant serving his master, a lady serving her maid, it's, it's interesting that regardless of these two illustrations, the main things we can pull out of it is eyes and hands. Now that's hard for us in contemporary idea to try to figure out what was the need to include this. Well, for this pilgrim, this was important in his context Servants, when they serve their masters, when uh, they serve those uh, who they were working for, in those days they did not operate based upon vocal command. 
It was almost uncouth in that culture for the one who was leading something to tell them what to do. They wouldn't say stuff like, go here or go there, do this, bring that, you are dismissed. That was not how they operated in that day. Matter of fact, it was very unlikely and almost unheard of for the one that was being served to vocally talk to the one that was serving them. What they would do is they would use their hands to command what they wanted. It was through the intricacies of their hand commands that the servant would know whether to come or to go, whether to pick something up or to leave it alone. It was the hands of the master that afforded the servant to understand what the master really wanted, which means that the servant had to make sure that they were paying attention. You did not want to miss any hand command because missing a hand command could put you out of position. You could miss something if you were not paying close attention to the hands of the master. So the servants would sit on the side and they wouldn't look at the face of the master. They wouldn't look at the bottom. No, they would look at the hands of the master because the hands represented the activity that they needed to accomplish. Let me tell you why the pilgrim is saying that for you and I. It's because our aim oftentimes and where we miss God is that we focus on the wrong things that God is trying to do. I know for many of us, you want God to write something on the sky to tell you what the next move should be. You want God to do something audibly for you. But can I be honest with you? In my life of preaching and living, I have rarely heard the voice of God. But one thing I am certain of, that even when I have not heard his voice, I have seen his hand. His hand represents his activity. His hand represents his movement. His hand represents the sign he provides in order to give assurance to people that no matter what he's doing, he's still involved. And somebody can testify as we have navigated through a, a pandemic, as we've navigated through economic upheaval, as we've had to deal with political uncertainty, and even as we've had to deal with some of us trying to go to school uh, virtually, trying to figure out how do I graduate with all this going on. Some of you can testify that this year has been hard. It's been difficult. I've been distant from people and there have been times PG I haven't heard God's voice but I can testify today as I'm sitting here in the sanctuary as I'm viewing tab global online I can tell you what I didn't hear of God I must admit I felt his hand I've seen his hand do some things that has kept me when I couldn't keep myself I've seen his hand keep my mind when I should have been crazy I've seen his hand heal my body when I got sick I've seen his hand make way out of no way matter of fact some of us ought to thank God that he's very involved with his hand he's always showing up and showing out and here's the good news why you ought to celebrate a God that moves even when he don't say nothing because even in his silence he can still give you a sign there ought to be somebody beside me that said thank God for his hand thank God for keeping me it was the hand of God that pushed me through school it was the hand of God that helped me to graduate. It was the hand of God uh, that kept my family intact, that kept food on our table. It was the hand of God. That's why I don't mind waiting to see God's hand because he's done it before and if he did it before, I just believe he can do it again. I wish my grandma was here because she would say to me, Charlie, you do know where the safest place in the world to be is, right? Uh, it's not in your car. It's not outside. You know where the safest place to be? It's in the hands of God. Uh, and that's that's our prayer as you go forward. Listen to me, graduates. Just look for God's hand. God's hand will keep you when your parents ain't there. God's hands will surround you and help you make good decisions. We all should pray that the hand of God continues to be over in our lives. I love it. Because that tension of anticipation is one of the struggles we have. Because let's be honest, we struggle with the silence of God. But even in the silence of God, God can still provide a sign of encouragement. And I need you to understand that one of the main factors of this text is that this, this particular pilgrim always stayed in anticipation, waiting to see what God's hand is going to do. I need you to know that, that God's hand is still there. God's hand is still ever present. And God's hand will keep us. Just as we have upward reverence. There ought to be outward anticipation. You ought to be preparing yourself for when God's hand moves in your life. It's not just upward reverence and not just outward anticipation, 
But this little song, this interlude concludes with this final look when it comes upon the dependence of God and desire of grace. It concludes with this idea of downward charity. It's right here in the text. It says, we're watching and waiting, holding our breath, awaiting your word of mercy. Mercy, God, mercy. We've been kicked around long enough, kicked in the teeth by complacent, rich, brutes, men, kicked when we're down by arrogant brutes. Here is the crux of the frustration of the pilgrim. That literally what he's saying is he's having a hard time dealing with those who are not in his current situation. These pagan nations have always tried to brutalize and ridicule the people of God. They always felt they had more money, had more prominence, had more prestige. So they would literally look down upon these pilgrims. Can you imagine as he was walking down the journey? They were throwing insults. They were at their place of ease. And they were thinking they were wasting their time going to Jerusalem to worship at the festivals. And so yet and still, I appreciate this particular pilgrim, in spite of the frustration, kept walking towards Jerusalem. Even though the insults were tough, the ridicule was starting to weigh on him. The thing that he did was not retaliate in a negative way. He simply went to the one that can provide the help he needs. Notice what he says. Give me mercy. Give me charity. Give me benevolence. Lord, we need something. At least give me something to give me some encouragement. I'm facing this ridicule. I'm facing these people that do not assume that I can accomplish anything. And uh, they look down upon me because of my faith. There's someone that understands the plight of the pilgrim because you too have probably been ridiculed. There have been others who think you're crazy for continuing to believe. There are people who think you've lost your mind because you continue to stay faithful. There are a lot of people that have counted you out because they don't see why you invest the time you do, why you pray like you do, why you fast like you do, why you read your Bible like you do. They, they don't. They're fine. Their 401k is good. They ain't had no economic crisis. To them, uh, it's no big deal. But for you, they look at you and say that you've lost your mind. And that's what the pilgrim is going against. He's thinking to himself, I need some mercy. I can't continue to deal with this. Literally, he cries out, enough is enough. And I don't know about you. I love the pilgrim sentiments here. Because every once in a while, you just come to the end of your rope. You just got to say, enough is enough. I I'm tired of what I'm facing. Enough is enough. I'm tired of seeing injustice to our communities. Enough is enough. I'm tired of political wrangling over our rights to vote, our rights to be policed correctly. I'm enough is enough. And at some point, you got to draw that line in the sand. And for many of us, that's a challenge because we want everyone to like us. We want people to agree with us. But at some point, for your spiritual sanity, you need to tell God enough is enough. And I know I can't get mercy from them. And I know that I can't get mercy from them. But what I am asking is, God, that you provide mercy. Because the only way I can survive this challenge and survive this ridicule and survive this oppression is I need the mercy that only comes from you. My brothers and sisters, that's what I love how this story concludes. This song simply says, listen, there's really no resolution. Matter of fact, this song ends in an open-ended way. We don't know what this psalmist receives we're not given insight but we are known that he petitioned his mercy to God and I need somebody to know that even if God don't come when you want him even if God don't show up how you want him to show up I want you to know you should always take your petition to God because God's the only one that can keep you when you can't keep yourself maybe that's what the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 when he said let us go boldly and confidently to the throne of grace to the one that can provide us some mercy I'm done I recently read an article that gave me some encouragement I will admit with all that was going on I was struggling finding good news I must tell you the truth I wrestled Oftentimes, I don't want to open up social media. I'm tired of reading some of the articles I read. I don't watch much TV anymore. And many times when I'm by myself, I like to just have nothing going on. I just had to insulate myself because of, of being inundated with so much negative press and so much bad stuff that I found myself having it internally inside. And I found myself crying out to God, God, we need some mercy. This world needs some mercy. Nation needs some mercy. 
I need to know, God, are you still in the mercy business? And just so happened, someone sent me an article in the Charlotte Observer. And when I read the title of it, it caught me. And I will admit it forced me to sit down. The title of the article was simply this. Son that, was, that, that Ray Carruth tried to kill just graduated from high school. I know that may not make sense to many of you, but I'm from North Carolina. In 1999, there was a wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. His name was Ray Carruth. He went to the University of Colorado. Matter of fact, he was a real good football player. But in 1999, tragedy and also an insidious plot to destroy the mother of his child, a girl he was dating at the time, was pregnant with his baby. And so if you knew the story, you know that he tried to have her shot off the road. Her name was Sharika Adams. And so he had sent people to kill her and her unborn child. Matter of fact, this story went viral. Matter of fact, he was convicted of murder. Sharika Adams did not survive. But that child that was in her womb, that Ray Carruth was trying to get rid of, he was born even though his mother died. What has saved him, if you go back in 1999, was a long 911 message that while she was bleeding and in pain and dying, she called the authorities and asked them to find her, that her child needed to be saved. Well, fast forward now. He's now 21 years old. Chancellor Lee just graduated from high school. The kid that should have died in 1999. The kid that this outside force wanted to destroy. God's grace and mercy and his family support system had kept him. And now a monumental accomplishment had been done. This kid that should be dead is now still alive. And I know that may not make sense to you, but I thank God for the chancellor leads of life. That oftentimes people try to knock you down. People try to get rid of you. But just like Chancellor Lee, I got good news. God's mercy is still available. He can keep you when you can't keep yourself. He can surround you even when evil plots are there against you. That's what I appreciate about the mercy of God is that it's always available to you and I. That's what he says. I look up to you, you heaven-dwelling God, because you alone are our help. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that this small interlude of a song, this small idea of a song that lets you and I know that at the end of the day, even when life gets frustrating, just look to God. Maybe that's the word that someone needs to hear today on this graduate Sunday, because life will get hard. Being distant from loved ones can get difficult. But here's the power, just look to God. He's our help. He's enthroned, his hand is still moving, and he's the one that can provide mercy in our times of trouble. I pray that each of us continues to feel and sense the mercy of God. Will you pray with me? Father God, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. We ask now in this moment that you will once again remind us through the lyrics of this song that even when things get frustrated, even when things get difficult, even when things get rough, even when life doesn't seem to go the way we want it to go, we can always keep our eyes on you. Thank you for our dependence on you and our desire for your grace. So, Lord, I pray that through it all, we always keep our head up. It's good to know that you never get off your throne. You're always in control. You're always ruling. You're always powerful. So, Lord, I just stand in anticipation as that servant waiting for that master's hand to move. So, Lord, I thank you for the hand that you provide in our lives to let us know that even in your silence, you can still give us a sign. So, Lord, we echo the sentiments of the pilgrim of this text. Enough is enough. Send your mercy. Send your mercy that provides strength. Send your mercy that provides clarity. Send your mercy that Rest and assures us that even though it may seem dark and dismal now, that you are a light and you are our salvation. In whom shall we fear? Thank you for the mercy that we can go boldly to your throne and declare and decree that your mercy is everlasting and your grace is forever. So, Lord, I thank you for those who have listened to the word and may they be encouraged and strengthened. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.
Listen, I hope and pray that the word was helpful. You see the multiple ways on the screen to make a connection. Go ahead and text that word connect to the number there or email us at connectwithus at tbcaugusta.org or even go to our website. Listen, we're so encouraged and strengthened by you. And maybe there's someone who said, listen, I need some immediate help. We have a live Zoom room that we would absolutely love to talk with you. Some amazing prayer partners there to encourage you. I know times can be frustrating, but even in frustration, allow your faith to keep you focused on God. Listen, we absolutely love you. We celebrate all of our graduates. We celebrate all of our young people. We're so excited because the best is still yet to come. Listen, as we prepare to close our worship experience today, as we look forward to seeing what God is going to do, continue to pray for the body of believers. We're asking now, and you continue to do the work you do. Last week of our Remerge survey, let us know so we can get some great feedback. Listen, we close every worship experience the same way. Because we've been blessed, we're going to be a blessing. Go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you as well. God bless you. Yo, what's up, Tab? I fam. Hey, Tab. We pray that y'all enjoyed that yes. word today uh, from Psalm 123. Mm -hmm. I look to you. And in this moment that we find ourselves in transitioning and, and, and kind of getting back to life, uh, as, as many of us know it, and some things are still the same. Yeah. In any of those situations, we still need that word. Yes. So I true. look to you. Yes, powerful word. And we also to say congratulations to all the graduates for all your accomplishment on this year. We're just so proud of you. You endured so much, but yet you finished it and you stuck to the course. And we are proud of you. So congratulations. Also, please make sure you follow us on our social media platforms so you can keep abreast of everything that we have coming up tab. We ain't finished. There's so much we got going in store. So oh, yes. we just Man. want you to be plugged in. So what is the closing word? The closing word. Since we're talking about I look to you and we're yes. talking about graduates, I do remember uh, graduates graduating high school, mm -hmm. graduating college, transitioning, yes. you know, to masters and mm -hmm. things like that. You know that as well. And you know, <laughs> as, as we transition into those moments, there's a lot of fear. Yes. There's a lot of unknown. Yes. There's a lot of people talking yes. and giving us bad advice. Some people giving us good advice. <laughs> Even in the midst of all of that, you yes. still need that word today. Yes. We look to you, God. So, so, as you're transitioning out of school, maybe you're transitioning to a new semester, new yes. place, remember to look to God and look within yourself because they're inside of you and with God, you have everything you need. I love it. Take care. Love you, Tab.